With all the warm sunny days we have in Florida, everything from giant oak trees to beautiful tropical flowers can flourish year round. But without the proper maintenance, all this gorgeous green can turn into an overgrown mess. Today on Ready, Set, Renovate, we show you a yard that's gone to seed, blossom into a lush landscape. Back in 2004, this Windermere home was a Street of Dreams superstar. Just a few years later, the demise of the housing market turned it into yet another sad foreclosure. After sitting vacant for several years, it was recently sold, and as repairs continue on the interior, the exterior is gearing up for a massive makeover. And this is actually not the first time you've done this house. That's right, 13 years ago we did it. So I guess about five years ago it went into foreclosure, so a lot of the landscape sat, and so that's why we're renovating it and putting new material in. Trimming up some of it, feeding it, and um, we'll be saving some of the larger pieces. This unique palm is staying and will be one of the focal points in the front yard. So you guys actually put this tree in yes. the first time this house was mm -hmm. landscaped 13 years ago. Right. It's, it looks amazing. Yeah. What is it? Uh, this is actually a triple trunk Phoenix Reclinata, and it's about 50 years old. So, um, you know, this was actually one tree that was uh, salvageable and they clean up very easily and uh, they really don't cause you a lot of problems. So, you know, this tree will be good for another 50 years. But these 20 footers won't be part of the new look. So we do have a couple of trees over here that are actually mature and they're nice and green, but they're not gonna work. Right, these are Eugenia myrtifolias and they've just gotten out of scale. So we're gonna extract these and we're gonna add some new landscape in this area. Bobby's team will also get rid of anything that could be diseased and potentially spread to the new plants and trees. The grass is also a lost cause and will have to be completely replaced. This is the center island of the, the landscape or the driveway and we are going to remove all the old grass, re a retro the irrigation system and then add some fill dirt and regrade to kind of give it a nice little slope in the center of the um, island. And what kind of grass is going we're, in? We're doing um, Icon Zoysia. What are the benefits of that? Because most people out here have St. Augustine or Bermuda grass. It's, it's more drought tolerant and it's a much softer, softer variety. The entry to the garage has been partially blocked by this shaggy flowering tree, which Bobby's team will take down and replace with an elegant palm. Now again, we have a nice mature tree here that adds some dimension to the house, but it's just, it's a bottle brush. They're not great trees. They're a softwood tree. They kind of grown out of scale here, and we're trying to put in a, or we're going to put in a specimen Zahidi palm. And it's important with this house because of all the windows inside. So yep. from every room in this house, you look out and you see the trees and the landscaping. Correct. So by removing this, we'll have more of an upright canopy, and it should be a very pretty space when we finish. Shipped cross country from California, this 30 foot tall Zahidi palm will grow another foot per year after it's planted. The root ball will need a hole five feet wide and five feet deep, along with plenty of manpower to get this giant in the ground. Due to the rain this weekend, the root ball got extremely soaked and uh, it probably put another 800 to 1,000 pounds on the total tree. Okay, so what did it weigh to begin with approximately? Around 8,000. Uh, this is the 85 to 9,000 pound machine, so it's probably close to 10,000 today. While Bobby's team wrangles the five ton tree, the irrigation pro gets to work straightening out the long neglected sprinkler system. We uh, started on it this morning and uh, uh, the guys have gotten through probably about 30% of the system, but uh, the rest of it should be quick. It shouldn't take us very long. Like I say, it wasn't a very bad system. It was, it was pretty good, so okay. we don't really have a whole lot to do. Maintenance is key on an irrigation system. Just like you maintain your car, uh, you need to maintain an irrigation system, and uh, a lot of people neglect that. Eric made a much-needed change to the sprinkler heads that will fit in better with the new design. They're still there. We've hid them. We've uh, changed out the... Sh it's a shrub spray-on riser, which are the pipes that are sticking out above the plant material. Um, aesthetically, they're ugly and uh, they're also problematic for lawn maintenance. You guys lop them off doing the uh, maintenance on the plant material. Uh, we put in a pop-up below the plant material when the sprinkler system comes on. They pop up above it, when it turns off, they go away. You don't see them. Once they've finished repairing everything, Eric says his team will use a method that's been around for a long time to make sure the new landscaping stays lush without wasting precious water. Getting very technical is evapotranspiration, or ET for short. We want to make sure that we're replenishing what the plant is actually transpiring and what evaporates. 
and uh, utilizing different ET rates and the different plant requirements, the water requirements for the plants, we designed a system around that to where we're getting the proper amount of water. We don't want to overwater it. It's just as bad to overwater as it is to underwater. During weekly lawn maintenance on this home, Eric's team will also use technology to make sure they keep the moisture levels on target. We also have uh, weather stations that are on site. You can actually have a weather station here that will measure the solar wattage per square meter, temperature, rainfall, actually adjust your controller automatically for you so you're getting the proper amount of water down. Once all the new plants and flowers are in, the beds will be covered with pine mulch that will create clean borders, accentuating the contemporary lines of the house. So all the demo's done, the dirt is leveled, and it's time for the sod. Coming up, we're gonna show you an amazing new drought-resistant variety that's gonna look great. And coming up later, so we're all suited up because these frogs do secrete a mucus that can cause an allergic reaction. Jimmy Jones and I are on the frog hunt. Jimmy, do you think we're going to find some frogs out here tonight? Oh uh, yeah, we should. They're primarily nocturnal, arboreal in the trees, you know, on the houses, etc. And this is where the bugs are coming out. So uh, okay. I think we can. We're braving the wilds of West Orange County in pursuit of an invasive species that's wreaking havoc on Central Florida. Hey everybody, we're here this morning with Tat Granada from Florida Home Improvement Associates. Good morning, Tat. Morning. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Well, we have a uh, faulty door that you're going to show us how you can make better, more energy efficient, work better, function better, and have a longer life. Yeah, th this family moved in about four years ago. Okay. And it seems like when they moved in, this door was just changed out. There was a problem with water coming in. Okay. And there was the, the door started a little bit of deterioration. So they wanted to replace it just as they moved in. And now here we are four years later and they're experiencing the exact same problem. Okay, so there's some kind of issue back here that has to be resolved. Yeah, there's definitely the way the, the water can come in off the roof right above the door could cause right. a bit of a problem and how the, you know, the water, the rains that we get in Florida can right. address the door, it's a problem. So there's definitely a problem with the frame, the threshold, and the type of door that was installed. Okay, so what's gonna happen with this door? This one's going away. We're removing that ent entire door. We're gonna remove the frame, the threshold, examine the opening, replace any rotten or damaged lumber, which obviously will be with all the water that came in. Um, put in new frame, new threshold, and a new door. And then the door the family selected uh, is from Custom Window Systems, and it's gonna carry a lifetime warranty against any fading, discoloring, any water infiltration, or any damage to the door. So if anything were to happen in the future, they're fully guaranteed for as long as they live in the home. And in addition to that, there's going to be some added security with this because of the type of glass that goes in the door that is gonna replace this one. Yeah, this family selected, they have uh, young children, and they wanted something, this being the rear of the home, Mm -hmm. They were they wanted something also that would protect them from security. So they're going to go with like a security type glass, which has a vinyl inner layer in between the glass, uh, so that no one can break in. It'll add that additional layer of security, especially to the back of the home. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hart from Ready Set Renovate here today with my good friend Tat Granada from Florida Home Improvement Associates. Tat, you're always bringing us great information, but today you have great deals. We do. We have a great deal today. Thanks to one of our manufacturers, they're giving us a tremendous upgrade opportunity for everyone who moves forward with a window project and moves forward with an energy efficient glass pack. They're going to upgrade it at no additional charge with a free sound and security glass pack. So it's a tremendous value. If we call now, we can still have time to get installed for this season. While the estimates vary, experts do agree that the right landscaping can significantly increase the value of your home. And just like today's Ready, Set, Renovate makeover, it can take your home's aesthetic to a whole new level. After three days of digging out diseased plants and dried up sod, the landscaping team is putting the finishing touches on a full-scale renovation. We're taking everything out and re-landscaping, re-sodding, and we should be done. Um, in about 72 hours. The home was a foreclosure that sat vacant for several years. So the team started with trimming and feeding the trees and plants that were salvageable. 
and adding new ones to round out the look. We have good anchors here. We're going to be adding some uh, very nice Zahidi palm here um, to the right of the garage. Add three silver date palms over here on the left. And then we'll be sodding that with zoysia sod and add some color at the front door. So it should turn out nice. Weighing in at close to 10,000 pounds, it took some expert maneuvering from the crew to get this big beauty planted. This is a palm from California in the desert. It's, uh, there's two, a couple varieties, but this is the Zahidi female. They're a much fatter trunk, a larger petiole, and just a very strong tree. So we wanted to get uh, a real specimen here. We're gonna use it by the garage, take the bottle brush tree out. We're gonna plant it over there and give you more of an upright look because the bottle brush is just kind of framing, or excuse me, it's just kind of taking over back there. Mm -hmm. So this will give us more upright in such a, such a tall home. Um, it'll really give some nice filtered light on the right. The 30 foot tall palm now stands proud and tall, extending all the way to the roof line. Next, the team started the tedious job of cleaning up the old sod and prepping for the new. The zoysia sod will add a carpet-like layer of green around the home. While softer than Florida's popular St. Augustine grass, it's also about 30% more expensive. The zoysia is more resistant to chinch bugs and drought, but its bright green will naturally yellow in the cooler months, something Bobby's maintenance team has a colorful solution for when the temperature drops. It goes dormant, so a lot of grasses we paint. It'll, it'll look the same color, so we'll paint it and uh, it'll stay like that typically for about eight weeks. Speaking of color, a variety of vibrant plants and flowers will light up the front walkway. This is the uh, Barber Karst uh, Magenta Bougainvillea, um, okay. like five footers on a trellis. And then we did the um, Hot Fuchsia um, Pintas, and they love the, um, the sunlight in this condition here. So between the two of them, um, they should really fill out nice. The house is painted a neutral pale blue and white, so Bobby decided to add different hues and textures with an assortment of foliage. We added uh, Indian Hawthorn. Um, it's a, a, a very hardy plant. It's uh, white. It blooms white in the springtime. And the holly is a oak leaf holly. It's from South Georgia. Now this is Apostle Iris. This will bloom a rich uh, purple, bluish purple. And they're um, just very, very upright and the bloom is incredible when they come out. The side yard was bordered with a thick wall of green that helps define the perimeter and adds a layer of cover. This is our podocarpus hedge and uh, one of the reasons we use it is a lot of we get a lot of requests for privacy. It is a fast growing, very hardy and, and it can be planted very close together and you can get a nice a nice hedge from it. With the new plants going in, it was important to make sure the irrigation system was in top condition. Getting everything wet versus getting everything effectively watered are two different things. I get the honors of testing out the new finely tuned system. We're going around the yard with a remote control monitor testing the irrigation system to make sure everything's up and running so we can protect our investment. And just turn on zone five here, see if it's working. Like a dream. And now, time for the unveiling of this dreamy new landscape design. With the bright flowers framing the front door and the manicured hedge outlining the home's contemporary edges, this former Street of Dream stunner has been restored to its former glory. Topiary trees flanking the entryway add a whimsical touch, and the striking mondo grass will thrive in the shade of this two-story house. The new Sylvester palms along the circular drive will only get better with time. It'll be a pretty tall tree. It rivals with uh, most of the other palms out there. So, you know, you're, you're looking at uh, maybe a foot, foot and a half of wood a year. So it'll definitely start taking off. Looks like this project already has. Coming up next on Ready, Set, Renovate. I run away like screaming. Like when it hops on me, I run inside and shut the door closed and lock it. A wildlife expert comes to the rescue of a community plagued by poisonous frogs. So you think around the back side of the house is most likely where we're going to find them? Absolutely, around AC uh, units, et cetera, where there's moisture. So. Oh my gosh. Well, look there's what a we huge there. one. You can tell by the warts and the warty skin. This is a Cuban, probably a female. Let's go ahead and get her. 
Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hart from Ready, Set, Renovate, here today with my good friend Tat Granada from Florida Home Improvement Associates. Tat, you're always bringing us great information, but today you have great deals. We do. We have a great deal today. Thanks to one of our manufacturers, they're giving us a tremendous upgrade opportunity for everyone who moves forward with a window project and moves forward with an energy efficient glass pack. They're going to upgrade it at no additional charge with a free sound and security glass pack. So it's a tremendous value. If we call now, we can still have time to get it installed for this season. In the suburban serenity of West Orange County, there are some unwelcome guests that send little Ella running for cover. I run away like screaming. Like when it hops on me, I run inside and shut the door closed and lock it. Ella's mom, Susan, isn't a fan either. They are very, very loud and very disruptive and they're constantly in my umbrellas and they're on my house at night, all over. They're on the screens. So it's a big problem. That big problem is suspected to be an invasive species known as the Cuban tree frog. After first being noted in South Florida, they've steadily been migrating northward across the state. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission says they're voracious eaters and will consume native frogs, lizards, and just about any small animal that will fit in their mouths. If consumed, they can also be toxic to larger animals, something Sarah Jenkins knows all too well. Totally healthy dog, like five years old, you know, loved life, jumping all around, and then one day he just wouldn't eat, and the next day we took him to the vet, and he was, he was in total organ failure, and he died. I'm just convinced I lost a dog to a frog. Jimmy Jones spends most days wrangling giant Burmese pythons. He's an invasive species volunteer with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, and seems to love all things creepy and crawly. Tonight, he's waiting for the sun to go down so he can figure out what's fueling this community's frog frenzy. What do you see here in this neighborhood that could be contributing to that? Moisture around the home, ponding, water ponding, etc. Jimmy says it's important to differentiate between true pests and creatures that are part of our natural ecosystem. Native frogs, native snakes, native reptiles, amphibians, etc. play a vital role. They're Mother Nature's uh, natural exterminator. Um, they will keep vectors away, such as rodents, which are disease carrying. Once the species is determined as far as invasive or native, then we can be proactive in regards to coming up with a, uh, a method of proper removal. As nightfall settles in, I get ready to join Jimmy on his frog search. You can never be too prepared. I'm pretty afraid of frogs as it is. <laughs> I definitely do not want any frog mucus on me, so I'm coming into this protected. I'm gonna protect my eyes, and I'm gonna wear some gloves in case I need to pick up or defend myself against any of these Cuban tree frogs. So you think around the back side of the house is most likely where we're gonna find them? Absolutely, around AC uh, units, et cetera, where there's moisture, so. Oh my gosh. Well, look There's a huge there. one. You can tell by the warts and the warty skin. This is a Cuban, probably a female. Let's go ahead and get her. Um, you notice the warts. Also, the big bug eyes, the broad head, the skin fused to the skull. Now let's turn them over. Big toe pads. And so we've determined we've got a Cuban tree frog. Coming up next on Ready, Set, Renovate, we're on the side of the house where the frogs like to hang out. We're actually building an artificial habitat. We'll see if we can convince the frogs to find a new home and give you tips that can help control the pest population in your own neighborhood. The homeowner removed the bamboo back here and also did a lime concentrate spray mm -hmm. around the house. And it seemed to resolve the issue for a while, but just recently they've noticed that the frogs are back. When one community was in the midst of a frog free-for-all, they enlisted the help of wildlife expert Jimmy Jones. After a three-hour search, Jimmy finds dozens of frogs, all of which he identifies as the invasive Cuban tree frog. You notice the warts, also the big bug eyes, the broad head, skin fused to the skull, Let's turn them over. Big toe pads. See how big those are? 
Likely transported by ships traveling from the Caribbean, these frogs are thought to have first arrived in Florida in the 1920s. In addition to their exceptionally loud croak, they secrete a toxic mucus that can be poisonous to house pets if consumed and cause an allergic reaction in humans. You can see it's starting to get irritated my skin. And that's from it's the just from the mucus, from the transfer, from the glove to me touching my hand. Jimmy says there are lots of things we can do to limit the number of pests like these. Of course, we're in Florida, we get these huge thunderstorms, uh, several inches of rain pouring off of the house which will collect usually around this area. So most homes should have a positive drain plane, which means high to low. You want the water to run away. Water probably collects in this area, which then causes, like I'd say, the domino effect. It's then gonna bring in insects, mosquito larvae. That's a buffet for invasive and native uh, frogs. Potted plants in any container that collects water can also provide a perfect breeding environment. Oh my gosh, these tadpoles are huge. You, you have a Cuban tree frog heaven right there. Yeah. Letting pests know you're around is another way to discourage them from taking up residence on your property. White noise in the home, if, you know, people keep ceiling fans on or I tell them to put music on. That will reduce it some uh, in the home. The other way is also being proactive around the home. It's not an overnight process. It's going to take a while. And again, it's mother nature. It's, it's something that pe some people just have to deal with. Uh, so, I mean, they're here. It's Florida. Jimmy says if all else fails, you can try giving the frogs an alternative they may enjoy more than your home. Yeah, this is like the landscaping uh, to keep the mulch in. We're on the side of the house where the frogs like to hang out. We're actually building an artificial habitat. We're using this tiki bamboo that the frogs will be attracted to. They'll end up inside, then we can take the bamboo and move them out of this area. To build your own frog habitat, you need to figure out where the frogs like to gather and start there. And since I did an evaluation on the home, I found that most of them started to crawl out of this area, probably from over there. Next, you'll need some mulch. I recommend with people, and it helps with reduction of insects too, is rubberized recycled mulch. It lasts forever, it reduces termites, it reduces insects, which in then return re reduce the, the apex predator for them. So we're just building a perimeter rubberized mulch with two artificial tiki bamboo habitats for them to hopefully hide and collect in during the day. Uh, most people use PVC, however, cosmetically, this is more appealing. Once the frogs start collecting in the bamboo, you can lift the tubes out of the ground and move the frogs away from your home. If you'd like more information about how to deal with Cuban tree frogs or other invasive species, visit the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission's website at myfwc.com. Coming up next week on Ready, Set, Renovate. So what are we having for dinner? Well... Let's see what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had some hamburger that yes. we could cook out on the grill. Actually, we do. Seems like a perfectly normal scene, right? It is, except it's happening inside a 150 square foot house. So, your husband says we're moving into a tiny house. <laughs> what did you say? You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's next week on Ready, Set, Renovate. Hey, we're here again today with Tat Granada from Florida Home Improvement Associates, and this is kind of an interesting job you're doing here, Tat. Yeah, it, today it's a little bit different. We have a little bit more work than normal. How did these people reach out to you and, and find you and, and know that you were the right person to do this work in their home? They were able to find us through one of our relationships with the Wholesale Club. It's been a great service that the Wholesale Clubs provide because it's difficult to find a reliable contractor. Mm -hmm. This family chose a door that's extremely strong. Mm -hmm. It's gonna protect from any type of storm. But one of the things that's not often thought about from a family perspective is everyone wants to protect from impact, flying debris, getting right. get an impact. But what we don't think about as common is that the wind pressures, mm -hmm. positive and negative pressures pushing and pulling on that glass, which mm -hmm. is thousands and thousands uh, times per hour.
So we wanted to make sure that this whole entire opening was able to accept that energy that gets dispersed. Mm -hmm. So we put in a really strong door. We want to make sure that the opening that it's going into is as strong as the door. So when the right. energy gets dispersed, it all works in concert together and it's the most important part of the installation. You actually had to custom fit some new framing for this. So you're taking pieces of wood like this and your team is going to frame this in all the way around. Correct, and it's a very vital part, and there's no additional charge to the homeowner. It's not like right. something we removed and said, oh, by the way, now we have to rebuild the opening. Right. Here's how much it's gonna cost. Everything's included in the installation, so when we come into something like this where we recognize we really have to strengthen the opening, there's no additional charge to the homeowner. So the key is really you're doing the job from beginning to end, whatever that entails whatever it entails and the, the most important part is to get it done right. This is uh, some pretty intense plastic work here. <laughs> and it's, it's funny you mention it because one of the things that we hear most when we stop at a job site, one of the biggest compliments we get is how clean and conscientious our crews were to make sure the family's not working, living through a construction site, not only if they were here, but for several weeks after. So we really do our best to make sure that area is contained as best as we can.